I have a son who's 14 now and he has severe dyslexia and it literally took us about two to three years to teach him the ABCs. He had mere handwriting. He had speech and language delays. He just um, was not, you know, developing the right way. I think in the past 11 years, I've probably done 1,200 clinic visits. I've been to speech therapy, um, OT, language, auditory vision. So one day I was sitting in a clinic and um, there were a couple of moms talking next to me. Um, the one mom said to the other mom, they were having a conversation and she said, well, I'm here because I have quad boys with autism. And they were discussing, you know, what doctors they had seen in the, in the community and so forth. And she said to her friend, but I can only afford to bring one. What we say to moms when they first come to the clinic, especially if they don't have any hope, is we try to talk to them about neuroplasticity. And that is the brain's ability to change. And that happens from the day you're born till the day you die. The younger you are, the more plastic or more changeable your brain is. So they used to say that at six years old, your brain had done all it was gonna do. And if you didn't, at the sixth birthday candle, you blew that candle out and it was all over. I had a mom that was a, uh, it was her child's sixth birthday. And when that child blew out the candles, she just started bawling because she figured that was it and he was never gonna get any better and it was basically all over. But that is no longer true. It was never was true, but now we know it's not true. So there's always hope because you can always make changes. It's just a matter of uh, finding what is wrong, what's not working and making that change and, and heading in that direction. Once these kids don't do well academically, they're, they don't fit in socially, and then in order to overcome for not fitting in academically, you have behavioral problems. And so these, these well-intentioned kids, you'll see behaviors come out. And so, and then the teachers will think, oh, these are bad kids, but they're not bad kids. They're just having a hard time learning. The reason that movement is so important with kids with ADHD and dyslexia is because the motor pathways and the thought pathways are mixed together. So the, the pathways that smooth and coordinate movement, smooth and coordinate your thoughts. And if those aren't working, and that's why we see such, uh, such a high correlation with incoordination or clumsiness in this group of kids, then that spills over to their higher cognitive functions. And I thought, well, you know, with my background in technology and my background in software, there has to be something better that can be done for these kids. And I know from my own experience that going from clinic to clinic to clinic, I had, you know, um, we had good insurance. We could only afford to go once, you know, we would only qualify to go once a week. And I knew it just wasn't enough. I came across a group of doctors that were treating kids from a neurological basis, and I thought, well, if you can help your child with neuroplasticity and from a neurological basis, or you can give them medicine, which is only temporary, I would rather do something that could help them from a permanent basis. One of the whole goals for me was to have something that was affordable, effective, and convenient. One night when I was making dinner, I thought, what if my son could be playing a video game while I was making dinner and that way he could get, we could have all the information, all the exercises, and I could be in the room present with him, but I could be doing other things as well. And I was just talking with a parent yesterday where she said her, her son's handwriting was, you know, two to three inches big and they're giving him writing programs and reading programs, but they're not looking at what's underneath those skills that are necessary to support. And so our program looks at the underlying functions, um, vestibular, gross motor, cerebellum, fine motor, visual motor, 
auditory memory, visual memory, those are all the things that support academics. And you really have to look at kids, what, what they need to make the academics, social and behavioral improve. Once you start fixing those lower functions, those other things are gonna all fall into place for that child. done you know months of work at home and now he's playing basketball he's in the school play he's singing he's um, he's 14 and he's reading which is pretty incredible video game again is a great uh, modality because the kids like to play video games and what we're trying to get is get them to be not just a video game where they sit there watching the screen but a game where they're actually participating where they are moving their feet or shooting at a target, having to move their eyes, having to coordinate the feet, perhaps have some rhythm, timing, music, uh, something that they have to sync together. And if we can do those things and direct them, so not just have them randomly do a dance dance revolution, but perhaps make the pattern for more to their feet or to a certain rhythm or pattern to coordinate their feet and their hands or the upper body, lower body, or the right side or the left side, with a computer program, then we could make a more specific and more effective change and get where you want to get faster. I think there's a lot of things that we'll be able to collect. Um, and that was extremely important to me because um, as we were looking at different types of technology, I wanted something that would be connected to the internet so we could collect data and analytics to help the next generation.